dear colleagues, I feel very honored uh, to speak to you today about what ENAC is currently doing. So it was very great to hear how ENAC has developed and uh, Martin showed it very nicely. And, but uh, I also think that uh, we have to look how ENAC is doing today and how it can develop in the future. To do so, I would like to take a few minutes to look into the past. Here you see a large monument of the Maya in Mexico. The Maya culture actually was one of the most developed cultures in Central and North America, and they had sophisticated water reservoirs which could lead or deal with droughts of over 18 months. And they had also very sophisticated irrigation systems, and you can see wonderful constructions. The culture, the civilization, was decimated well before the Spanish people arrived. So what made this civilization fall, and what can we learn from them? Diamond identifies five factors that contribute to the collapse of the Maya as well as other societies. First, environmental problems, a missing link between population growth and environmental abilities, so for example, degradation of soils. The second one, climate change. The Mayas were confronted with unprecedented dryness periods well beyond 18 months. The third, war between the tribes. The fourth, collapse of essential trading partners. And the fifth, wrong governance and lack of foresight of the local government. If you listen to the five factors and you look at the, at the situation today with energy, climate, it sounds kind of familiar. So some of these factors would apply also today. So this is why we set ourselves a vision that ENAC aims at contributing to the transition towards a more sustainable built and natural environment. And we focus on three topics for this year 20 to 2024. That means climate change, digitalization and urbanization. Anticipating, mitigating and adapting to climate change. How can we use digitalization for sustainability? And how can we tackle the challenges of growing urbanization? I will say a few words in for each of these topics. When we look at climate change, we have an, the Alpon Center in Sion, where we are located, so one of our associate campuses. And there we study the effect of climate change in the three poles, North, South Pole, as well as the Alps. This is one example of the Arctic. The Arctic is actually warming two to three times faster than the global average. Our ENAG researchers have found that aerosols, tiny particles suspended in the air, play a key role in the acceleration or mitigating of these climate change effects. Some questions that they are looking into is, will they reflect these aerosols, reflect or absorb light? Will they form a cloud? Will they stay local or travel long distances? This is extremely important to understand it fast enough so that we can develop mitigation measures if possible. The second aspect that Martin also mentioned, we also have to mitigate climate change. That means we have to develop CO2 capture and storage technologies. At ENAC, we are looking into which rocks, which soil types are required to store CO2 over long periods of time. What will make it a safe storage and not have CO2 leak after a few years or a few decades? And finally, I think a key issue that was already mentioned, combining renewable energies is an, one of the key challenges of our time. We are involved in ENAC into leading two suite projects and cooperating one suite project. It's a national research project funded by the Ministry of Energy. And one project looks into the unlocking the full potential of solar, biomass, wind, hydropower and renewable energies in the different places, in the Alps, in the lowlands and in the cities, bringing together technology and social sciences. The second question that is addressed by the second suite project is how to become more efficient while keeping comfort and well-being. This means how can we develop a living lab and work together with the population, administration and the private sector. As I mentioned before, the second key area is digitalization. And here we try to use sensor technologies coupled with remote sensing and machine learning to identify movement of antelopes in Africa or movement of people within the city. 
for the second one, looking if people come too close, will they get an alarm, like in COVID, for avoiding different um, uh, pandemics. So in the exhibition, you will find more of these uh, sensing technologies, drones, and so on. A second aspect of digitalization is digital fabrication. Digital fabrication gives us the opportunity of co-design humans and robots, new types of buildings. These buildings could potentially be more uh, resource efficient, use less, have lighter structures, and robots can support us in building these structures. The second thing that we can do with robots together with sensors is to identify, for example, in bridges when they might have a crack and having a robot filling in and making the crack, constructing on the go. So we don't have to close off the bridge for long periods of time, but we can really use this technology to make it happen. The third topic we looked into is urbanization. And one of the main concerns is to look into how can we rethink the connection between the urban and the rural. Somehow, the rural is entering to the urban. We can think of urban agriculture. This means that we are producing food in the cities. On the other hand, the urban is moving out more and more to the rural, so creating the suburbs. How can we rethink these type of links by looking also into the linkage between water, food and energy? Now, this was looking at the territory, the big picture. Let's try to zoom in into a building. And here, the key question is, how can we have a healthier building, a healthier city? Thereby, we look into three aspects. The one is thermal comfort. Can we individualize thermal comfort in a room, depending on the needs of the different people? How can we monitor indoor air pollution to early recognize potential problems emerging? And the third thing is, how can we involve the people to themselves behave in a more energy efficient way? This was a short glimpse of what we do at ENAC. And one thing that you might have noticed, this is not possible to do alone. This is only possible if we collaborate with each other. And we see that ENAC collaborates not only within the three disciplines, but also we collaborate within whole EPFL and we have international collaboration. Within the three disciplines, we also have a directorate board, and uh, this is composed of myself, the associate in Katrin Bayer for open science and digitalization, Vincent Kaufmann for education and knowledge transfer. And also we have the section director and the institute director of each of the three disciplines coming together in the Direction ENAC. When I started my deanship, we gave us ourselves the task to create a strategy for ENAC itself. And that strategy has five goals. So the first goal is to look into and to foster excellent disciplinary research, as you saw before, so in the rankings that Martin showed, but also interdisciplinary and transdisciplinarity. Most of the projects that you saw before were inter- and transdisciplinary. And here we have also two new elements that came to in the education part. The one is a master a minor in sustainable development together with our colleagues from STI. And the other one is a master on urban design together with ETH Zurich. While we continue to foster the design together and the skill elements that have been put forward by the former deans. The second goal we set ourselves was to contribute to diversity and community feeling. We were the first faculty who created a diversity office. And we aim at really providing an environment where people can flourish, regardless of gender, background, and any other personal characteristics. And as you can see from the pictures, we were able to really attract a significant amount of female faculty. The third goal that we set ourselves relates to data-driven approaches and open science. So we really aim to be open in all, with all the data and all the models that we have in the future. And on top of it, we created an ENAC IT for Research group, which 
supports our researchers in getting into machine learning, into making the best use of the data and build effective and reproducible data pipelines. It has served already 62% of the ENAC laboratories. The fifth goal leads with, or well, has to do with integrated communication. And here we just encourage you to join our Twitter channel, to join our LinkedIn group. Finally, the fourth goal, and which is also one of the key foci that we have for today, is to build strong partnerships and innovation. In collaboration with the Vice Presidency of Innovation, we have created the EPFL FUSTIC Association. FUSTIC meaning Future Sustainable Territories, Infrastructure and City. This association aims at bringing together people from practice, administration, industry, together with scientists to co-design projects and to think about the problems of the future. We have already 102 members. Within that, the Blue City project is the first flagship project from InnoSwiss, where we have 23 partners coming together and working on the question of creating a digital twin of the city of Lausanne. So this is what we have been doing so far. Now, what do we want to do in the future? We are engaged now in thinking about 25 to 28. And we have been, I mean, climate change will accompany us, but are there some topics within climate change that might become more prominent and where we have to put a, f a specific focus on beyond the topics that we have already addressing? One of the topics that has been emerging is a human ecosystem health. Can we identify or early anticipate new viruses, new epidemics, and how can we work with urban design to avoid that this becomes reality. We are working close with the um, faculty of Sciences de la Vie in order to try to figure out what will happen if dengue comes, malaria comes, how do we have to redesign our cities to avoid that this happens? So really an early recognition of future health problems. The second topic that came out of our mind is we have maybe to look closer into the water, food, energy, and even the land use nexus. Why do we need to do so? We are starting to realize that if it does not rain, we don't have food, we don't have energy. So how are these things interlinked? What are the trade-offs? And which problems can we uh, expect to come in the future? And how are we going to deal with them? So these are two ideas that we have been thinking at, at the level of the Direction Arc and uh, with my associate deans. However, this event is also an event to co-design, as uh, Alain mentioned. So it's also to understand together with you which are the topics that you think are relevant topics that we might not have seen so far. And for that, we will invite you into this experiment of Mentimeter. And I hand over to Alain. Well, Go it's ahead. very simple. Yeah, you have a question and you take your smartphone, you go to uh, www.menti.com, uh, the code, where the code, the code 9815 2245, où vous utilisez le QR code, donc allez sur www.menti.com, vous introduisez le code et puis vous répondez euh, en donnant des mots pour répondre à la question de Claudia, en anglais, s'il vous plaît, parce qu'on a des mots en français et en anglais, c'est plus compliqué. Essayez de choisir euh, voilà, un mot, deux mots, euh, trois, trois mots maximum, et on va voir s'afficher, euh, au fond, le, le résultat de ce qui, pour vous, euh, sont les priorités que devrait se donner l'ENAC. Uh, which research topics would you most like to collaborate on ce que vous vous voulez, euh, comme collaboration avec l'ENAC, avec euh, l'EPFL. Euh, ah oui, ben oui. <rire> Claudia, euh, peut-être une première. On voit, on voit déjà quand même deux, yes, trois oui. mots. Ce, ce... 
Yeah, we can already see that, that there is really some uh, some elements emerging. So energy is really a, at the forefront. We can also see climate change, sustainability, mobility. I saw at some point also something like resilience emerging. Food, health, water. C'est toujours so intéressant de regarder dans les marges aussi, parce que exactly, les signaux faibles right. viennent peut-être d'idées yeah. voilà, qui sont en train de pointer, qui ne sont pas les plus évidentes. Oui, yeah, exactement. Donc, nous voyons aussi des bâtiments centriques, je vois, donc mettre les humains dans le centre, la nature, vous pouvez voir la digitalisation, la scarcité de l'urbain, que je trouve très intéressant. Je suis en train de regarder la tech carbone. La tech carbone, ok. You know, It's so very, very small. <laughs> I think it's great intelligent maintenance. So we can see that there is a diversity of topic that you see that you can collaborate with with ENAC that we will then use and take up to think also of our strategy in the year 25 to 28. And please approach our researchers in the in the stands in the exhibition so that we can already start collaborating and sharing today.